All right, this morning we're learning a Nebraska man is the 14th person to die in the U.S. from vaping. The CDC now reports more than 800 documented cases of vaping-related illnesses. CNN's Dr. Sanjay Gupta talked to researchers working to pinpoint the cause of these illnesses. Dr. Gupta joins us now with the very latest on that. Sanjay. Yeah, John, and, and there's you know been 46 states now where people have gotten ill as well, so that gives you an idea of the scope of this. John, you know, we, we've talked about the fact that there are sort of two separate issues uh, really at play here with regard to vaping. One we talked about yesterday, which is the concern about youth nicotine addiction. But today we want to talk about, as you say, this, this sort of what's being called a mystery illness. What exactly is making people sick or even dying? It's an ongoing investigation, but here's what we've learned so far. I had the shivers and, it, and, it, and I couldn't control it. So I would just randomly convulge. His is a story now repeated hundreds of times around the country. I couldn't control myself. Young, healthy, and then suddenly struggling for his life. To be laying in a bed um, and not being able to breathe, it's every parent's nightmare. It is cases like Adam Hergenritter's that have prompted the Centers for Disease Control to now open their emergency operations center. I'm used to it being activated around things like Ebola or hurricanes and things like that. Why vaping? The outbreak of pulmonary injury associated with vaping or e-cigarettes is an emergency. We're seeing young people become critically ill and die. Most frightening, eight weeks into the investigation, no one knows exactly why. It's important to say that no single product, substance, brand, or additive is linked to all the cases right now. And what is on a label may not actually be what the product is. Our guidance is quite simple. Uh, don't do it. Don't do it because we don't know that it is safe. Why did you do it? I didn't think there was any risk in trying it. You know, I'd never heard about anybody having any negative effects from it. So I thought that I had nothing to lose. Last year, Jay Jenkins and a friend drove to a convenience store and bought a product labeled CBD called YOLO. YOLO meaning you only live once. And they vaped it. I took two puffs off of it. Next thing I know, I'm you know, feeling crazy and not thinking straight, not being able to move. Within seconds, Jay lost consciousness and started to have frightening hallucinations. His friend drove him to Lexington Medical Center, where he started having seizures and breathing difficulties. I thought that I was in hell and that I was already dead. So what did cause Jay to react so violently? It's what Professor Michelle Peace has been trying to answer. Do you call it the vape lab? Is that what happens? Well, originally we called it the vape lab. Uh what her lab and others have shown is that two-thirds of these products are not what they seem. Some have THC. Some have other things. Jay Jenkins, he had vaped a totally synthetic substance. It had no CBD whatsoever and no way to know who manufactured it. Is the CBD supply chain safe? There are pockets or lanes in the supply chain that right now probably cannot be trusted. Identifying those lanes, good luck. <coughs> I think that for the consumer, you really need to beware right now. Something is leading to death in a number of people and leading otherwise healthy young people to be hospitalized in intensive care on mechanical ventilators. We just don't know what it is. But a possible hint, according to the CDC, nearly 80% of people reported using vape products containing THC whereas just 16% reported using nicotine-only vape products. And keep in mind, because THC is illegal in many states, there might be many more people who've used it but won't admit it. And the science says that what's in that liquid isn't necessarily the same composition that's in the vapor. Julie Zimmerman is part of a team of Yale researchers focused on the chemical and physical reactions when people vape. There are chemical reactions happening in that solution after the manufacturer mixes the chemicals even without any heating. FDA actually regulates them and calls them generally regarded as safe, but that designation is for eating, ingestion, not for inhalation, breathing them into your lungs. 
you sort of superheat these chemicals with these heavy metal coils. You sort of atomize these molecules. They get back into your lungs. They re-accumulate or recongeal. I mean, I don't know what that does to the body. Just like they didn't know what cigarettes did to the body when they first came out. Does that part of it worry you? So it, it worries me, for sure, because we don't know the long-term effects. But it doesn't worry me for smokers. Dr. Michael Siegel is a professor of public health at Boston University. It doesn't worry for me for smokers because I know that one out of every two of them is going to die from smoking if they continue to smoke. If you can't be certain that something is safe right now, would the CDC recommend, at least for the time being, that people just not do it? Well, what we're recommending is if you're concerned about your health risks in light of this investigation, that you consider not using e-cigarettes or vaping products until we know more. It's a warning Jay Jenkins has heard. I certainly won't do it again. You won't? I will not. It, you know, I, I took a chance and lost once, but luckily they're able to save my life. One of the, one of the concerns we've heard many times come up is uh, where has the FDA been in all this? I, I, I think it's, it's safe to say that there is now a lot of traction, a lot of movement. Uh, FDA is looking on several fronts at regulation, including the type of product that, that Jay Jenkins took, a CBD product, which is legal federally because it's CBD hemp, but not well regulated. So he bought a, he bought a, a product from a, from a convenience store, paid with a credit card, and yet the product that was labeled CBD was not CBD at all. That's one of the problems uh, the FDA is going to have to address, John. Again, Sanjay, we're so glad you're on this story. Thank you for all of your reporting on this.